What's up? Hey, what's up? Not much, not much. So, uh, you watch, uh, yeah, I can hear an echo. Are you on speakers? Uh, it's a laptop speaker. Oh, God. Okay. Um, yeah, so you watch one of my uh, VODs about PVT? That should be better for you. Uh, yeah, I watched your whole coaching session with that guy on YouTube, and it really helped me out. Um, I did not, I didn't really before know what I was doing, but now I'm going three to five gate and uh, going fast classes if they get ghost, if they get Viking. Um, I use my Blink Stalkers to, you know, kill the Vikings. Um, and I'm having a lot better luck in PVT just from watching that. Okay, good. Well, no, nothing's about luck unless, like, it's a blind timing. But uh, it's good that uh, you've improved. Um, so you you said you were having trouble with PvP? Um, yeah, I'm having some trouble with PvP. I don't really have a direction to go off of. Um, season 1, I, I four-gated non-stop because, you know, that's all anybody did. Um, and then I haven't played really a lot solo since then. And uh, I'm, I got the, I've used Edelscott's three-gate defensive build numerous times. Um, but uh, I don't really have, you know, a steady build or a steady setup I, I want. I know what to do. Like, I don't know if I should get Immortals. I just go straight Colossus because I never win with Immortals and stuff. So mm -hmm. I've seen you use Immortals and, um, you know, different units. Yeah. Well, uh, I guess we'll uh, ch we'll check PvP after this game. Uh, load up the replay. Go at 0-0. Zero, zero, uh, faster times 2. And uh, let me know when you're ready. And I did win three other Terran games after this one, so I'm thinking my mistake was the fast expansion, but we'll have to see what you say. I am ready. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, well, it's cross maps, so uh, it's easy to think that uh, fast expanding is safe, but uh, if you don't have the right micro to uh, back it up, it can uh, definitely uh, be uh, awkward. Yeah, so my, my, my forest fields were terrible this game. You'll mm -hmm. see. Yeah. It depends what time I'm playing, you know, if I'm playing real late at night, um, my APM definitely goes down to under 100 because then I don't, I don't spam. Um, mm -hmm. If I'm playing during the day and I spam though, I can usually keep it around 200. Uh, I've played a lot of Warcraft, so I'm really good at microing um, heroes and units. Okay. You realize you ended up doing 8 Panon and chronoing 9-10, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. that's... That's that. As I said, these are most of my uh, most of my losses are are mistakes. Like you know, doing stupid stuff like this. Yeah, it's fine. I was just making sure uh, that was not a standard thing. No, no. Um, Pylon twelve uh, gateway fourteen gas always. Okay, so you can't spawn close position like that uh, with the new patch. So you scouted there for nothing. Oh, you can't. I didn't uh, even know that. Yeah, this map and uh, shattered. And uh, you cut probes uh, like uh, for like ten seconds for no reason. Uh, only a few builds require you to cut probes. Like right now, you're cutting probe. Well, you, you do want to fast expand, but uh, before that, you did cut probe. Um, <laughs> and uh, really, the zot and the PVT, the first zot, is really bad. Uh, usually, like a stalker's better. Um, just because a Zog gets scouted and can't deny scouting of an SCV, if you would have had a Stalker there, you would have been able to repel that. Uh, now you're not adding your gates when you have, like, you know, you're going to add your gates, 100 minerals too late, and then now he's coming, which which makes it very awkward. Um, yeah. I think I could have gotten my gates up successfully before he came. And then able to block this? Well, no, but they would have been down. They would have. You would have had like more units fa faster. Like uh, usually, if they put pressure, like uh, what did this guy do? Yeah, this guy went like four racks off one base. So technically, oh, wow. it should be really hard for you to defend. But uh, yeah, so you you didn't really see what he had when he killed your scouting probe, and he yeah. has a lot of marauders. When he, they have a lot of marauder, you need zealot and sentry. Stalkers are just like free meat for them. Yeah, I didn't even know. I didn't even know there was a limit on the stalkers until watching your YouTube video, where you said only get about ten to twelve, and mm -hmm. I've never made more than that since then. You know, okay. it's worked 
really good. But uh, one more thing too is uh, you got lazy with scouting. It would have been good to uh, not lose that probe at the tower, and to just uh, to just confirm if he had an expansion or not. If he doesn't have an expansion by six minutes, you need to add a fort gate. Uh, and if you would have added a four gate, you would have had more units. But yeah, those stalkers and then uh, <clears throat> when you're under pressure. It's good to uh, not cut probes, but when you see that it's like a really heavy pressure and you think that uh, it's a three racks, if you think it's a three racks, or if you just think there's no expansion behind it, then cut probes and just chrono your gates nonstop. But yeah, at that point you lost all your econ and shit. Yeah, that guy was really cheesy and gimmicky, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, like uh, you just didn't play it right, so. Uh, yeah. And uh, when you lose games like this, don't like. Don't get mad, just look at the replay and find the answers. Because, you know, uh, leaving and just queuing up another game, it won't help you improve. You'll be like, ah, oh, this guy, he just made units, it was stupid. No, it wasn't stupid. <laughs> like, you could have added a 4 gate, you could have had a better army composition, you could have scouted if he had an expansion or not, but, and then add a 4 gate. You could have, you got supply block at some point, you kept making probes. There's a lot of mistakes that, if you only watch your replay after a loss like that, instead of being a sore loser, you can improve a lot. And I'm not saying you were a sore loser, but it's just, you know, exactly. Uh, I'm pretty bad. Um, I, I, I sort of get the Hydra Rage clip, but I'm, I'm getting a lot better at it. Um, I'm a good mannered person, but I just take it, you know, a little bit too hard. So that's uh, mm. that's really good to point yeah, out. Well, at your level, it's all about efficient practice. If uh, if uh, you don't watch your own replays, you're never going to improve. Uh, I played for six months, and I played like 10 hours a day. I was a ladder bot, and I never checked on my losses, and uh, I didn't improve a lot. And uh, that was very bad and sad because I didn't improve. So really, at your level, it's all about looking at your losses, trying to write down timings, trying to write down, like, oh, if I scout this, then it's most likely going to be dead, and try to not, like, uh, like let's say you don't make a losses, and they open, like, four racks with a lot of Marines, and they have a lot of Marines left over, and when they come with medivacs, you have no AOE to kill all those Marines. No matter amount of uh, getaway units will uh, be able to repel Marines, Marine, well, good force field, but like that's only if like you're a top Korean. But really, like just looking at your replays and taking the time to analyze your play and fixing mistakes by yourself is what you need to do at your level if you want to improve. Because like you, you're past the point where playing a fuck ton will help. Of course, doing efficient practice a lot will help. But if you don't look at your, uh, I'm trying to find a PVP right now. Uh, yeah, that's what that's what was um. You know, I was playing a shit, a, a shit ton of games, you know, and um, all that was happening is, you know, I went from 250 points, rank 5 in my division. I dropped down to actually 60 points one day because I lost 12, 13 in a row. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> I almost said, you know, screw this game. I'm not going to try anymore, blah, blah, blah. You know, and then I uh, I turned on your stream, as a matter of fact, and I, you know, I watched um, a couple of their uh, videos um, one, one was 4K Ward and another training video, and uh, mm -hmm. going into my games after that, they were a lot more, um, you know, I, I wrote down some tips and stuff, and, you know, I improved a lot just in these past, uh, I went back up to, I've, I've gained like 20, and I went like 20 and 10 these past two days since then, so I'm really happy. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Like, it's really easy to... Um... Because, like, unless you have the memory of, like, an elephant where you remember everything, um, it's really easy to uh, forget your mistakes. And I, I get really angry if I lose to the same all-in, like, ten times in a row, just because I'm angry at myself for having a shitty memory. But taking notes, like, uh, usually it will always help. Um... Yeah, that's something I never did before was take notes, you know. Now I'm sitting here with my note and pen. And I'm taking them down because <laughs> I've seen, you know, even even Day Nine does the, the notepads all the time on his. Yep. Artosis too. Since you replay, <laughs> that's an old replay, but it does the job. It's uh, I'm not sure how I open exactly, but uh, it's just a three gear robo. Usually with three gear robo, you can win against most uh, most. Uh, Mostly everything because you know you have time to cancel. Uh, you have time to cancel Robo Bay if you see Phoenixes. You have time to cancel an Immortal if you're making one. You can keep the Immortal if it's blank. Uh, yeah.
So most of the time, uh, Robo opening Robo is good. Like uh, the thing about uh, PVP is there's a lot of timings for expansion. So uh, if you go Robo and they expand it early on a map like uh, Shakuris or Antigua, and then you can't all in because they're gonna force field you. Uh, that can be pretty hard, so you have to be careful. But you can always all in with a war prism. Uh, oh, I actually have a really, <laughs> really great game to send you that I played this morning. Um, yeah, the guy wasn't too happy too when I beat him. Give me a second. Oh, awesome! I saw. I, I got to see your game burst that Terran this morning, where um, he almost beat you with the Marines, but you were able to hold them off. The one I made carriers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, like, uh, sometimes it's good to not quit, and uh, when you're behind, especially against Terran, it's good to not all in, and just try to get back into a macro game. There's only a few specific moments where uh, it's good to, uh, yeah, it was in this game. Hold on. But, uh, yeah, load up the replay I sent you at 0, zero in the meantime. Uh, just I really want to find that game because it was a really good game that I think could be beneficial to uh, to you. Yeah, I used to have um I used to have kids soon for all my PvP help, and he he started me out with this three gate robo build, but as I said, he hasn't played uh in like a month now, so we haven't been able to practice PvP, and he's my only Protoss partner right now, so it's gotten really bad. Like, I just go four gate, or, you know, I just go a three gate, like, and then I don't know when to build my robo, or I don't know when to build that fourth gate, and mm -hmm. I just end up beating them due to scouting, or, you know, I, I expand before them. Yeah, well, like, if you were to expand in PvP, you either need, like, a good map, like, uh, Zalnaga, where you can save yourself with force field, uh, or Antigua, or Shakuris. And uh, you have to either expand with uh, Blink or with Immortal. And uh, it's only good if... Uh, oh, yeah, that sneaky guy. And uh, if they if you go Immortal and they go Phoenix, you're screwed. If they go Blink and you have Blink, you're fine. And uh, you just have to not make too many probes if you expand. But, yeah, let's go for the replay I sent you. Uh, and then I'm going to send you another one right about now. Is there a quicker way to to put the replays in than dragging them, dropping them into the folder? Uh, yeah. If you go to the replay section on StarCraft 2, there's like a folder to the top right. There's like a folder, folder, folder. You just click there, and then you can add some replays. Oh, I see. Okay, you get it. Good. Um. I'm just making a new folder really quick because I have a ton of uh, replays just that I haven't made folders for. <laughs> oh yeah, that's fine. Very organized. You're very organized with all your replays. Um, do you go back and like, do you go back and use your replays a lot for um different scenarios, or do you just uh keep most of them around for um coaching and whatnot? For statistics, I keep them around. Okay. Like a win ratio and stuff like that, but um. No, well, sometimes I, I go back and look at a really old replay and laugh at myself. Because my mechanics got better. They're not perfect, but they got a lot better. Yeah, um, me and Kim both agree that you've uh, you've improved so much <laughs> since the last time we've seen you. <laughs> and that's, yeah. that's about two, three months ago. We, we cannot believe your improvement. You watched a couple of your recent games, too. Mm. Yeah, 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 well, I used to uh, I used to play a lot, but like I, like I told you earlier... It's really easy to play a lot, but it's a lot harder to to play efficiently. Um, I got a replay loaded. Zero zero. Yeah, I got it loaded. Okay, three, two, one, go. So yeah, that was a tournament game. Uh, it was the second game, uh, and I was up one zero. And uh, really, if you open Robo, usually you can um, you can you can like unless like I said, unless they expand, you can usually. Uh, get a, a good control of the game or unless they do like a really quick blink and uh you yeah. didn't have like a force feel or something i definitely agree with that um in pvp i don't really see too much for a fast expansion um unless you're really good at 
I guess, my groin after a three gate or a four well, gate. If you uh, if you put pressure early on and you get an EV, do you know what an EV is? What an EV? Yeah. Um, I'm not familiar with that term. Yeah, it's a statistic or poker term. It means like, uh, let's say you kill eight of their marauders and you only lose four zots, then you have 400 minerals of EV. Because oh yeah. So like, let's say you have an early game battle where uh, you put pressure on the Protoss and uh, you kill like uh, three stalkers and you lose one and you lose a pylon. Well, no. Let's say you kill six stalkers. And uh, you lose one stalker and a pylon, then you have an EV of 400, and with that you can expand. But uh, it's the same thing with like mid game or late game battles, like uh, or just like early game battle. If you don't have an EV of a lot, you can add a forge. Like let's say you have an EV of 100, then you can add a forge, or like 200, you can add a forge. Or a late game, if you have like a big EV, uh, you just want like a big battle. Then you can like double expand stuff like that. So I went uh, one game one robo, uh, really passive. I <laughs> think I don't play like that anymore. But uh, I went passive because I saw that he was well enough with his uh, what's the name with his gates. Yeah, I've actually I've I've done the one gate robo. You know, if you if you know there's not a four gate coming, I, I you know you can get those couple immortals out that can do some quick damage. I think. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, yeah, I'm not the kind of guy that defends like uh, pressure with a. A robo because I just don't have the timing down for that. But uh, I knew he was gonna put he wasn't gonna put pressure from what I scouted and uh, yeah. Yeah, so, what is he doing? That's a we all oh, Phoenix. I yeah, have no yeah. So I'm making a robo bay and I'm making a war prism and just look at uh, how close it gets <laughs> to the phoenixes and then I cancel the war prism and the robo bay and oh, uh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then I just go blink. Um, Honestly, Phoenixes, I haven't lost to them. A lot of people are saying they're good, blah, blah, blah. I, it's just, I just don't do it, and I barely ever lose to it, so I'm not tempted to try it, so I don't recommend it since I don't play it. I feel the same exact way. Kitsune yeah. tried Phoenixes on me like four different times, and I beat him all four times, and that's probably the only times I, I beat a player of his caliber. And mm -hmm. um, recently, I, I heard Artosis is pushing the Phoenix idea. A lot of people have told me that he's... Uh, talking about it so much but i think you have to have insane micro to do good with phoenixes you know you can't yeah. one well, phoenix die that can't die and whatnot but yeah well nanny was making it work so that's the only player i'd be like interested in like watching and maybe being tempted but uh it's I've like, seen him use them against Zerg too a lot, Nanny. Well, actually. Yeah. Well, yeah, he likes his Stargate play. A lot of players like Stargate, but uh, I don't like Stargate against Zerg because everyone does Stargate, so they're used to beating it. Yeah. I completely agree. Stargate. I will only put up the Stargate if I need to defend against a lot of Mutas or Broodlers. Mm -hmm. So but, yeah, that was ballsy of me to take an expansion, but. You know, I had blank, I have defender's advantage, I already had my five gates. If you take an expansion, like, if you look right now, I have 30 probes, but look, I'm splitting the, the probes, like, 8 at the natural and 16 in the main, and look how much more resources I'm getting. Well, yeah, I, I get close to 900, and you can't get past 800. So just, like, staying at 30 probes like this is super good. Yeah, see this? Right, that's probably the perfect time to put an expo down when you did right mm -hmm. there because you know this is where you need the extra money. This is going to be an interesting battle, though. Obviously, he's he's going to push in. Yeah, well, if you look at the army value, like uh, I'm already getting ahead, and then he's just gonna oh, yeah, that game is a long game, <laughs> we won't watch it entirely. He ends up in like a three base with forges and uh. But yeah, I saw that he was taking an expansion. So when you see them taking an expansion, chrono probes. But uh, if you think they're all inning, just cut probes. But uh, yeah, we're going to look at another replay. You can leave this. Um, I'm just going to show you because if you open Robo a lot, it's easy to get all in. And um, I send you a replay, by the way. Okay, you got it. So uh, yeah, I usually, um, I usually do a four gate, and I end up like 50% of the protests still do four gates, I'm sure. Um, You've yeah, heard. but it's easy to beat. Like, um, if you make Zot and you Chrono first Stalker and then get a second Stalker and you just play defensive and uh, you don't, you add uh, probes and your gas as you have 16. Like, I wait to have 16 
on minerals to add people in my second guess because you don't want uh, to have a shitty uh, mineral economy. So uh, yeah. what I do is I like usually I put a lot of pressure with three gate, but just with three gate and uh, you chrono one stalker. You can defend most of of four gate pressure. Like the only time it's really hard is when they bring two probe to build a pylon. That gets tricky. Yeah, because I don't like getting Zot, Stalker, Sentry because then you, they they can come and get a a pylon up. If you get Zot, Stalker, Stalker, then you know you like uh, their second Stalker takes forever to get to your base, and it's really easy for you to defend. You know what? That's an interesting point because me going sell at Century Stalker like I've been doing. Um, oh yeah, you get smash if they if they just want to go poke really early with Zoth Stalker. Yeah, like I'll either end up you know missing a pilot proxy pylon in my base, or I'll end up um, running out of force fields. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah. So let me know when uh, you're at zero zero uh, times two. I'm loading it right now. So you're in master. You said like top five. Uh, um, right now I'm in diamond. Uh, master, I'm in two versus two. Um, but I uh, see myself being master if I play. Um, if I continue playing steadily, I was master season one. I've my highest like ranking is uh, five hundred in the region. Oh, nice. But I have fifteen hundred solo games played season one, and uh, last damn. Season, 200 so okay so yeah let me know when you're ready oh yeah times two you yeah touch? zero zero i'm ready three two one go so uh yeah that game's a perfect example of uh if you go robo and uh they go expand uh like uh well obviously that game there's another factor like he made blink and dt so uh, I got cut out, uh, cut by surprise. But it's just an example to show you how to all in if you go robo. Because like, uh, if they have their expansion halfway done, then you can expand. Like it's not too late, and you won't be too behind. But uh, and you can put fake pressure so they cut probes. But if um, if their expansion is done, uh, it's really fucking hard to make an expansion yourself and come back. So, yeah. uh, that game, I ended up, uh, doing it all in, and you're gonna see how it works. It's the, it's the usual, uh, I, I guess I should do a bit more of, like, one game, one robo, but it's the build I was talking to you about, I chrono the second stalker, but I ended up losing my probe like a noob, and, uh, that didn't work out too well for me that time. <laughs> You'll see what he does at the watch hour with my probe. I was really surprised. What I do is I get the second gas, like, uh, as I build the Stalker, uh, as I build the Zealot, sorry. Because you can afford it anyway, so. So, yeah, uh. I see he's chronoing his, uh, his first Stalker. I usually wait for his probe to be out of my base before doing the same thing, because I don't want him to know. Because, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, probe with his pilot with his <laughs> yeah, he surrounded it, and I wasn't quick enough to do a return cargo. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I noticed you lost that fast Z lot. Now, was there anything you could have done there? Uh, well, yeah, I could have ran, but still would have been hard. Like it was easy for him to win the battle since he had the probe. That's why, uh, if you defend with a Zealot Stalker, it's good to keep uh, or to bring your probe to the battle because if they have a probe, then you can lose very easily. Because it's not worth focusing the probe, but your result is going to die faster. And uh, this was really weird. Like, uh, I'm going to put pressure right now. And uh, he's going to end up making stalkers and even blink. But he's still going to get, uh, he's still going to get, uh, what's the name, DTs. Like, right now he's making a DT shrine. And uh, I didn't make two observers, which is end up going to costing me. So I saw two stalkers. I wasn't sure what he was going to do. And then right now I see a lot of stalkers, so I'm like, well, I don't need a second observer. And you see the blank. <laughs> yeah. But uh, what I didn't do and should have done is uh, put my units on old position at the ramp. So if a DT tries to get in, he wouldn't. But uh, you'll see, I'll, I'll end up like spreading them out, and then the DTs is really easy for them to get in. Now, did you spot the DTs yet? I'm looking. Nope. No, 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 no. 
No, but I, I'm still going to win, so shame on him. Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't too good. See, now what I did yesterday is I, I was owning him with Blink Stalkers, and I just got I just he hit my observer or he killed my robo just before my observer gets out. Yeah, well, going blink without obs is not a good style. Yeah, he foregated me and changed it into a DT rush, so he was behind. He was sitting right where you are, the same map. He was sitting like that position the entire game, and I got blink, and um, I was sitting at the top of the ramp holding position, and then I went down, beat all his units, and I looked in my base, and his uh, DT had just killed the robo. Yeah. So, Get a robo or get an observer before uh, Twilight. Um, yeah. Well, I don't do blink with an obs build. I don't do that. But yeah, I think. Uh, well, no, you can get the Twilight, but just you need an observer like really ASAP. Okay. So um, two zealots can beat one DT. So I'm gonna leave one zealot on my main. And, oh, uh, I didn't. That two zealots can beat one DT. Yeah. But you need to keep an observer. So I had an observer, and now I'm putting pressure at the front, and I'm dropping Zalots in the back. And uh, if you look at the army value right now, or if you just look at his army, like there's no way I can beat that. But uh, with just like war prism and kiting him and stuff like that, and like uh, it's really I... easy to start thinking that uh, because there's an archon, force fields are useless, but they're really not. Like you can still use them if uh, you play you play properly. Yeah, and you've made his uh, probes on his main base have no income. I don't, is he doing that on purpose? or? No, well, I, I was dropping Zots. Wow. And then you keep poking at the front. That's why I'm saying, like, if, uh, yeah, and I'm even going to get Stalkers in the main since I had Blink. Because I just wanted, like, to keep the pressure on. Your income's literally the same as his with only one base. Yeah. But, uh, like, uh, yeah, now I'm going to force shield him and then he's going yeah, he's going to lose right now. And uh, it's good, like, if you if you do, if you fight his army, just send, like, I sent five stalkers to clear up his mineral line, but, like, literally, like, two would have done as good as a job as five. But, you, um... You do that when you're engaging in battle rather than, um, you know, so he can have time to defend it? Sorry, what was your question? I've noticed you, you like to kind of uh, distract him, like, you'll, you'll go to do a fake attack or you'll go to push in a little bit, and then you have your, um... Or prison, you know, macro to automatically drop in his yeah, mineral. Yeah, because if you don't put pressure on him, then he has nothing to do but sit there and look at the minimap. If you put pressure, he's gonna be like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, and then you drop. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's like you're ready to engage a Terran, and then you warp prism drop in their main. Then th they lose their attention. They even send some army there, and then you attack at the front. You can do that with Zerg too. It's a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, your, your lightning drops versus Terran are. They're, they're definitely winning me some of these late games because at players my level, you know, if I'm engaging in battle, they don't even look at their mini-map. Yeah, 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 they don't pay attention to their CVs. Three storms off, it's over. <laughs> it's even harder, I think, for Terran to uh, to uh, fight against storm drop than regular drops because, you know, regular drops from Terran, you will hear, like, the your probes are under attack. But yeah. uh, storm drop, you don't hear anything until the storm is casted, so they're kind of screwed if they don't look at the minimap. But yeah, you just really have like uh, if you're beyond in uh, in uh, econ like I was because he was on two base. It's really good to you can't win if you just like bash your head against the wall. You have to bash your head against the wall and then hire uh, a falcon to go poop on his head or something <laughs> <laughs> like the war prism. Um, yeah, so that's what you can do. You can open three gate to survive a four gate, although it wasn't a four gate. You can open three gate into Robo, or you can do one gate one Robo if you're really convinced that he's not going to four gate you. And um, as far as the Colossus battles go, um, like if you're behind in Colossus, you can go the double Robo, but it's really easy for him to. Uh, get Blink and just all in you with Blink Stalker at uh, Colossus if he has a bigger Stalker count, uh, uh, Colossus count. So you really have to be careful for that. Um, but yeah, th I feel that's that's all there is about PvP. It's a, it's a lot technical. There's a Perfect. lot of like having to look at their replays and analyzing your losses and trying to figure out timings and remember them. 
uh, but most of the time it's just like comparing your your uh, comparing your chrono with his chrono and trying to figure out like if they spend three chrono on Nexus, you can put pressure, you can do four gate, you can steal their gas and take your gas, and then do a defensive three gate, and then they're gonna be forced to all in with a they're gonna be forced to all in with a really crappy uh, or like if they make like two quick gates, two quick gates, and uh, then you can steal their gas and take yours, and then they don't have Zot to kill their gas, so they're most likely gonna forgate you, and then it can help you. You can practice your forgate defense. Um, yeah, that, that's a uh, that's that's a really good point. Um, yeah. If uh, if they go for two quick gates, like three stalker rush, for gating or putting pressure is like a big no no. So when they do that, you can also do one gate one robo and chrono probes a little bit. Okay. That's, yeah, that's like true. if they if they get two quick gates and they rush three stalker rush like this, that's when it's good to make like one zealot, one stalker, one one sentry. Is that is the three stalker chrono in technique? Is that a good viable option or no? Um, say? it's a bill I used to do. It's a bill I don't do anymore. Oh. Uh, because it's too defensive, it's too passive. I like to put pressure because I'm really confident in my micro, so I like to go poke at people and force yeah. them to be on the defensive. Even though uh, being uh, being on the defensive, you have the advantage. Like you shouldn't lose if someone's attacking you in PvP because of the uh, you know how shitty the ramp is now with the vision and all. And uh, yeah, yeah. And plus you're defending, so your units come out a lot faster. But uh. Yeah, maybe I'll stop being aggressive, so aggressive, but <laughs> yeah, it's good to, uh, it, it's just, you just really need good micro. Like, you know, like, uh, when you warp in your stalkers, like, you can put a rally point while they're being warp in. If you I didn't know that. Yeah, if, I, you, I, if you put the rally point on their units, they're going to start attacking as soon as they're done warping in. That's a oh, lot of wow. things, yeah, that's a lot of things people don't do. So, like, if you're doing a foregate or you're putting pressure and uh, you just don't uh, set the rally point for the units you're warping in, like, they're either they're going to move before attacking because you're going to tell them to go forward or they're just gonna, not going to move at all. And, yeah, uh, I always have to go out of my way and it, it takes away from my battle micro because I have, to, I have to bring them into the battle at the same time. Yep. So I can just uh, – have them auto attack that's going to be a that's a really good option yeah you have to right click on a unit hopefully the unit doesn't die but you know <laughs> yeah it depends I'm a lot sorry go, go ahead. ahead no sorry go ahead i was just going to say i'm sure um you know being a warcraft 3 player you've noticed that uh you know this game's a lot less uh micro intensive but it's still um you know it still requires you to be paying you know attention i want yeah, to yeah, yeah. i don't know Say that, but basically, it's uh, it's 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 definitely a little bit different. I'm noticing. Well, it's you. It's I think it's still the same amount of micro, but it just it takes less time because your units die faster. But like, if you don't tell them like the best, like uh, you know, like uh, against Vikings or against Brewlords or against Corruptors, if you don't take your stalkers and tell them to uh, right click this unit, shift right click this unit, shift right click this unit. Like, uh, attack this one, then attack this one. If you don't tell them to focus fire, and you, if you don't shift command them, uh, you're losing DPS, and you, you're losing efficiency. So there's a lot of micro involved, like, in about everywhere. It's just less like, uh, okay, my units can tough, like, a two-minute battle, so I just have to keep looking at the battle for two minutes. <laughs> now with No, but now with SC2, you can harass on top of that, and you can keep expanding and transferring probes and making sure your upgrades are... Like, it, it was so, it was so like, stupid in Warcraft 3. Like, no one was upgrading their units. Like, uh, from, like, the War Mill or whatever, or, like, the Hunter's <laughs> All. Yeah. No one was doing that. It was just like, look at your units and fight, and if you fuck up, you're done. Well, except on that, except on that, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were like upgrading for the spiders or something, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely, um, I'm definitely a fan of uh this game over that. And as you were saying, versus uh, Terran, you know, until I, I really didn't know that, um, you know, with my stalkers, I was only supposed to hit Vikings and Medvics. And now that I'm, you know, doing that with my stalkers, I'm definitely 
I'm definitely, you know, saving my classes a lot longer. Yeah, and because if they, uh, if they don't have Vikings, then you just have to uh, blink and chase the medevacs when you're stalkers. And because if you never take out the medevacs the entire game, they're going to end up with like 10 medevacs. And it's really out hard to out DPS 10 units that are being yeah. healed, especially when they have chubby units like Marauders that are so beefy. Yeah, that's definitely a good point. And I've noticed getting that attack upgrade when you have your Colossus, that helps a lot versus the Ghost. Oh, yeah. Um, do you have... I, I think we could uh, fit in uh, PVZ. He's like, uh, you're good enough that I don't think me playing you would be beneficial. I think it'd be better if we look at your PVZ and talk about it. There's a lot of players at your level I don't find like life coaching to be efficient. Like I can just talk to you about the game and you know, then you know the, the thing about being fast and macroing, you can fix that on your own. Yeah, like when I did, I did some, I did a little bit of coaching with Inca because uh, he's also he's a, he's a he's a really nice guy who I've met um in StarCraft uh, one. Mm -hmm. I've had him on Facebook for a while, and uh, when we when he he was telling me the same thing, he said, you know, when he's coaching people that are pretty much you know master level, he said, um, you know, high diamond, low master, um, he will not, you know, play them uh, versus him because he said, first of all, you know, the level of play is completely still completely um, different, you know, at his level compared to my level, and mm -hmm. he said, second, you know, he said, of course. Like, you know, I might have a chance to win by doing something cheesy and stuff, but he said, you know, it just takes away from, um, takes away from learning, so. Yep. Uh, he pretty much just does the replays, too, um, and sometimes, like, if, you know, I'll specially request it, he will, he'll sometimes go on the stream and give some tips on it. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. But he doesn't oh, like doing that either, because he'll just be like, pylon probe, pylon probe, uh, templar, templar. <laughs> yeah, well, I think, like, it's good for, uh, for lower players. Yeah. Even though it's just pylon probes, I can like find all your mechanics problem and fix them for you. Tell you like a lot of pointers. But when when you get better, like uh, you know, you like you're smart enough that you can like fix your mechanics. Like that's something I don't think enough people do. Is like when you watch a stream, it's really easy to talk a lot in the chat and uh, you know just be inv involved and just you know. I think, like, uh, if you really want to be the best player that you can be, like, when I watch streams, I don't watch the stream, I watch the VODs, I check, like, I study how they do stuff, and uh, I copy some mechanics, like, uh, like, Hero, and, uh, Sase, and Huck, I've took a lot of things from Huck, from Huck and Todd, like, uh, some things people don't do enough is, like, spread your units, like, if you know there's gonna be a battle, or if you know someone's gonna engage on you, like, uh, tr if your units are just chilling there and not doing anything, it's good to spread them out and not have them clumped up. Like, uh, they, yep. they nerfed uh, EMP to make it easier, yep. but it's still, like, if you don't spread your units, you're going to get fucked. So. I was going to ask you this now. Um, all right, say I have, um, I mean, a big, this is one of the worst things I have problems with, and I'm glad you brought it up because uh, I probably would have forgot to ask it. Now, I don't, like, when I have a 200-foot army, mm -hmm. I'll usually, um, I honestly usually only use two control groups. Like I'll put my stalkers and classes in one control group, and I'll put like zealots and sentries in another control group. Mm -hmm. And then if I have high templars, I might make them number three. Um, like how do you number your units when you get to two hundred? Like um, what do you for one? What do you put in? Or like how many control groups do you use, and what control groups do you use them for? Uh, well, I have like uh, you know what the tilde key is. It's like, yeah. okay, so I have control tilde, that's my control 7 if you watch my stream, because I don't do control 7. So that's usually for my war prism drop, I have 6 for my observer, 5 for my nexus, 4 for my robo stargate, 3 for my gates. And what I do is, uh, I, I guess, I wish I could uh, have my gates on uh, W, but I'm just so used to it. So I have uh, everything on 1, usually. Yeah, I don't get the whole W thing either. I, I, I just put all mine on number 3, too, to be honest. Or, yeah, number 3 and the next to the 4. Mm -hmm. um, I want to, I meant more like um, units like in Yeah, in yeah I was getting to that. So uh, I usually put everything on 1, and uh, let's say I need to focus on 1 unit during the battle. Like uh, stalkers to chase, or uh, colossus to uh, stutter step to make sure they AOE marines, sure. or uh, templar. 
I'll put those on two and then I put everything on one. But uh, most of the time, like, um, you need, uh, you can't put uh, casters in the same control group. So I'll put everything on one and then Templars on two. And then if I don't have any sentries anymore, I'll put Templars on one. And then uh, I'll go back and put Stalkers on two or something. Um, or like Carriers or whatever. Or like Air Unit. Hey. Usually Air Unit will take uh, my control six group. Uh, which is the observer, but uh, as long as like whatever needs uh, attention, like Templars or like Blink Stalkers, are on a separate hotkey, so you you can chase and not lose DPS. Because you said I put Stalkers and Colossus onto. Well, if you have to stutter step your Stalker to snipe Medivacs, that means you're gonna stutter stepping your Colossus, and your Colossus don't need stutter stepping maybe yeah. at that point, and they're gonna lose DPS because you keep making them move. So it's good to uh, try to separate what needs attention and what what doesn't. When you're um, that's a really good point. Like when you're in battle, um, if you're in like a giant um, Terran battle and you have like four classes and um, he on purpose you know separates his army into let's say three or four different um places around mm -hmm. your army. Do you click each classes and have them concentrate on like one arrow area of damage? You know, for um his marauders marines, or do you have the, your classes hit the same area? Uh, usually when they do that, they're really fucking good, and I lose. But uh, yeah, <laughs> as long as like you take your Colossus and you try to focus fire Marines, that's all you need. Because like the you just, counter uh, cut out on that. Oh yeah, I said as long as you focus. Uh... Hello. <laughs> yeah. Every time you say that word, it keeps cutting you out. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no. Like Skype said, uh, there was a connection problem. Um. But uh, I don't think it's me because I didn't drop from Bnet. But it might be me. Who knows? Anyway, so uh, as long as uh, you take the Colossus and you focus the Marines, that all that matters. Because at the end of the day, Marauders get countered by uh, Zots. So as long as you get rid of the Marines, which rape your Zots, by the way, oh. and uh, you get rid of the Ghost, that's all that matters. I did not actually... Um... I did not realize that Marines uh, were more important in getting rid of than um, Marauders. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, Marines have way too good DPS. Uh, it's, it's really, like, nonsense, and you have to get rid of them. Because they fire way too quick, and they're in a ball, and they're, like, harder to kill than Marauders because Marauders are more fatty. So there can be, like... Let's say, like, you have a ball of five Marauder uh, Marines... Like, Zots will be less efficient than against a ball of five Marauder. At least I think so. All I know is Marines do more DPS, so they're good to take out. Yeah, watching your game this morning, just with those couple Marines, like, when he beat your... I saw you morphing those three stalkers, and you went up to go take them out. Mm -hmm. And, like, he focus-fired them. They went down so fast, I couldn't believe that. Like <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and the stutter-stepping from the Marines, too. Like, yeah. uh, Marauders are slow. They don't stutter-step that well. But Marines are just insane. Do you have a PVZ replay? Um, yeah, let me try to find a loss. Okay. My PVZ has been really good lately. Okay, well, that's good. As long yeah, as... I want to say, um, I'm trying to say, like, my worst party in PVZ used to be the Mutalisk in the air, but ever since, um, watching, you know, or Ever since I've been, you know, using my head instead of just massing games, um, mm -hmm. I picked up from your stream a couple of very good points. One, how Blink Stalkers can handle the Mutas, and you can uh, get away with doing, you know, two to three cannons at each expansion. Mm -hmm. um, and then I see, you know, if he goes a lot of Mutas, I've seen you adapt to the Phoenixes. And um, Yeah, well, Phoenixes are just, like, good to get if uh, you scout the Spire early. Because Blink Stalker is, like, the hardest way to beat Mutas. But sometimes you, you don't have a choice. But, yeah, continue. Yeah, I've noticed. Um, I mean, just, oh, that's a five-minute game. I uh, don't want to play that. Um, wow, I haven't really lost to a Zine. Like seven games. It's pretty good. Oh. Uh, I'm trying to find. Uh, what's that? Spell time. Spell time. Spell time. Game game. Uh, Uh, 
For some reason, in my um, recent, it's deleted like a lot of my. Uh, there might be one. Um, one second. Fast forwarding it. Okay. What I could do is I could send you um, a random game and uh, <clears throat> maybe have you uh, give me some pointers no matter what, because uh, I'm sure you know I'm still doing some stuff wrong. It's, you know, most of the people I'm playing right now are just high diamond. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, yeah, that that will uh, work if this replay doesn't fit. The, yeah, like, what we need or what we want. I wrote down bad manner next to his name, so I was hoping, or I'm hoping it might be a loss. <laughs> but sometimes they will uh, say something to me, and then you know, I can't, I can't uh, stop myself. So mm -hmm. uh, it's almost. Uh, Oh yeah, what's that replay analyzer you use? Also, I wanted to ask you that. While, it's a uh, uh, SC2 Gears. It saves every replay. It can give you matchup statistics, uh, just statistics alone, uh, chat logs, all that jazz. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, this game um, so far he's got a fast third. Looks like I might lose. Um, oh, never mind. I just rushed him with this ton of stalkers. And he says beep power too powerful um maybe i should just send you a uh a longer game that um yeah whatever replay works i'm, I'm one of those i'm I'm a, I'm a stupid i only save all my wins and i um i had a couple p lost ones that i had and i had a couple uh uh i have so many kids in the me ones yeah, I'll just send you a win. Um, yeah, that's I'm fine. Just a random one, and uh, yeah, just give, you know we can just uh, go through whatever. I'll pick one. I'll pick a recent one though from um, a day or two ago. What uh, what do you do if they get a quick third, Zerg? Um, I hit, them, I hit their quick third with all I got, or but I with will. What? Uh, with all you got. With with what? Um. Oh, I usually go uh Six gate, uh, one robo push, all in around that time, or I'll do five gate, um, two uh, like one star gate or um, two classes. Yeah. What do you make out of the robo? Um, I usually make two observers right away, and then I'll either go a couple immortals if I think that he's got roaches, um, and if not, if I see like hydralisk or just wings, I will go right to classes. Hmm. And what time do you hit? Because a good a good timing is usually at 9.30. If you win uh, with a timing attack off 2 base past 9.30, it means you're playing a Zerg. That's not too good, if you know what I mean. Like, uh, Yeah. I've noticed um, I if I if I wait till after 10 minutes, it's so hard to beat the Zerg. Um, yeah, because even at 9.30, they're going to have they're gonna have their 60, 70 drones. So yeah. if you don't uh, if you don't do a, a timing attack at nine thirty, you're kind of screwed. So I loaded up the replay at a zero zero faster times two. Let me know when you're ready. Tibor. Next time I uh, on our next lesson, I'll have my replays a little bit better organized for you. Good. Are you on a, a wireless? Because Skype told me that there was a an internet connection problem again. Uh, I actually have Verizon FiOS. I have like 20 megs down and like 10 megabyte, 10 megs up. Oh. <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> um, I I plugged my laptop in though. It was it was wireless. Uh. Like ten minutes ago, but it should be should be perfect now. Okay, so uh, zero zero times two. Are you zero, set? Zero times You're... two. I am. Ready. Okay, three, two, one, go. Right. So um, you should uh, check out Sass's stream and uh, make sure you make a Sassy Python when uh, you don't forge Jiffy. And a Sassy Pylon is having your Pylon, and it takes a little bit of work. You might mess it up once or twice. It happened to me, but I, I may I do it 
if we, oh, okay, you just forge Effie. Yeah, that panel right here is not good, because if you're going to forge Effie, the panel should be part of your wall, it should be a forge, because then it's even more easier for them to just kill the panel and get in the main. You know what, I always, um, sometimes I'll use that pylon as a little bait pylon, because I know that they're trying to do that, and I'll put, like, two cannons behind that if I see them going, um, strong roach, but I was wondering about that. You, you, I should put it always on the top of my ramp. Yeah, because even a forge is easy for them to kill if they go all in. Like, uh, <laughs> it's, yeah, I don't like, it's like, um, yeah, I don't, yeah, oh god. And, uh, yeah, the second Bonon was way too quick. The cannon too, like, uh, he wasn't, he made like 14 pool. That's nothing early, you could have expanded. And then after the expanded the cannon. So like your timing's kind of weird and not efficient, and uh, that panon should be behind the middle line. Yeah, your wall's way too out. Like if he all ins you, it's gonna be so hard for you to defend. And uh, that was then, all in me. yeah, and then if he tries to all in you and go from behind the middle line, then your defense is so far out that your cannons won't save you. You understand? Yeah, make the uh, the Sim City a little bit more carved in. And the second pot on beyond the middle line. If you really okay. want to forge Effie on this map. Okay. Yeah, I see. He um, if I didn't have those four seals, he probably would have got a lot of uh, probes there, right there. Mm -hmm. Maybe block that side, that back part more. Yep. Oh yeah, this is a this is a weird game. Um. You have full chrono on the main. It's really important to keep track of that because, well, of course you haven't chronoed anything so far. Well, you just did. But what I what I mean by that is uh, the chrono, it's always going to take the nexus that's the closest to the building. So uh, it's really easy to go full chrono on the main and don't not have uh, and not have any chrono left at the natural because it's always going to take uh, the chrono from the natural since your buildings are the natural. You understand? Yeah. Okay, so you have to be careful about that. And uh, you cut a lot of probes, uh, and you chronoed Wargy Research, and I don't get why. You kind of in the dark, you you managed to... Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is like one of my late game losses. Is <laughs> yeah. I kind of, a little bit strange, but um, it is a loss, so... <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah, no, it's fine. I'm not judging, but uh, you know, like going out, making a lot of stalkers early on is not too good. Um, Especially if you don't know if he's gonna go Ling and Roach, like uh, I'd rather you, uh, I'd rather you have like Zot's entry than uh, random stalkers. Plus plus one was delayed. Uh, still not enough. Like he's at 45. So yeah, you just got out of resource this game because you chronoed out a lot of units and a lot of war game research, and you didn't chrono probes a lot. Okay, so decent force field. But like I said, your your Sim City is not carved in. Like uh, he tried to do that aggression, and the cannons didn't even attack. He did attack like once. Okay, so that's really like uh, it's 10:30. Like uh, Voyager won't do anything at that point. If you want it, well, no, it's gonna help you defend. That's for sure. But uh, Voyagers were honestly they met. I meant to go Phoenix at first, and then I saw that he went Roaches, so I just started pumping them out, and I um. I think it was after watching an Annie Wall game, actually. <laughs> I mm -hmm. kind of got air in my head. And um, then I decided just to go hit his hit his main base and take it out. So that's what I do next. Okay. But I know it doesn't really slow him down that much. Because when I watched this replay the last time, I saw how fast his expansion gets gets turned into a lair. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about not, not even going Stargate unless I have to. Yeah, well, you know, it's a style I don't like because it's a style I feel like Every Zerg is good at defending. It really, yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, right there, you didn't, yeah, you didn't have, yeah, you have a lot of money. Like, uh, you should never move out if you have so much money like that. Like, you moved out and you had like eleven hundred, and you still have eleven hundred. Like, uh, to be able to spend your money, you should be at least on six gates. Uh, to be able to do so, and right now you're only on four gate. Um, and yeah, you still lost a lot of pro, but the natural. Yeah. And uh, it was obvious he was going to make some Hydras because of all the Voidries you were making. So really a Robo would have like been a savior. And uh, you're still like rebuilding those cannons at the natural, which I don't really agree with. Like one's fine, but like, yeah. 
don't waste my money. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you have a lot of gas right now, and you're making zots when those could have been sentries who were saving energy. And uh, it would have been good to... Uh, Phoenixes at that point, it was obvious he was going to have Idris. Oh no, don't suicide this. Yeah, you should just leave. <laughs> oh, you did a decent job. You killed like four Idris. And you made him uh, pull drones. But I uh, really like, uh, okay, you're making cannons to buy time. But you're still not getting that robo. Like, uh, that's just really, and you're, when you transfer probe, you transfer way too much. Like, uh, because if you transfer too many probes, you lose so much of your economy and just transferring, you know? Uh, that's like, what uh, I <laughs> Like uh, the 16 number is something you sh should work on. Like always make sure you have 16, then transfer the cutoff. Always. I never even paid attention to that until I watched your uh, your lesson before, so I didn't even like realize that 16 was the ideal number, you know? Mm -hmm. I knew that 24 was the max, but I never yeah. realized that, like 16 was the yeah. ideal. Optimally, you want to be at 20, 20, 20 on each mineral line, but uh, you're never going to get to three mining bases on a map like Zelnaga, so you should cut probes right now. Because you have enough at the goal and shit. But really, like, uh, okay, you're finally getting a robo. I don't get a fleet beacon, but uh, you should have double wall. You have a lot of gas. Another ship won't be too bad. But uh, double robo if you're dead behind just to get a lot of Colossus. You can still yeah. win this game. If uh, you made blink, uh, you know, you can blink. You can be blink stalker with blink. And, okay, you're finally getting an observer. But, like I said, Twilight Council and the upgrades are really important. Like, uh, this guy is not too good. But, yeah. Uh, he has two upgrades, and you're still at one one, and uh, yeah, it's pretty important to just uh, to just, just um, upgrades like speed everything up. Well, no, no, no. Speed's only good if you harass with a war prism on big maps, but this is not a map for a war prism. It's too small. But bling's really important because you can beat Ijas, uh if they don't have creep, or yeah, you should have clear out the creeps to the left side. If you have creep that close to your base, it's never a good thing. You made a second fleet I, beacon. I'm not sure I, why. I was I don't know I don't know either. Um, that was one of my main mistakes this game. Um, oh, no, I think it was no. Oh, nice, you sniped Ash. No, it was like not getting any like colossus really. Like look at your look at your money. Like uh, you should really have like tr triple robo at that point. Yeah, and I could have beat him if if I did go triple robo. You're right. Yeah, you just have like a lot of floating resources. Yeah, his whole army is just stalker roach. So um, if I if they well I mean, even with blink stalkers, if you would have had like that two k dollar spent and two units, uh, you could have done a lot better. Yeah, I'm writing that down to uh do upgrades, blink stalkers, um kill creep, pump observer out first. Mhm. Mm but yeah, like you always need Colossus. Like the only time Colossus is not good is when they have too many corruptors. Then you rather want to go storm to kill the Ijas. But that really, ever that barely ever happens. And you're not controlling the tower too. And uh, Archons against Roach Ijas are really not good. So like you're wasting your resources right now. You did have a lot of cannons. That's something I'm going to give you. And uh, Carriers and PVZ are only good against corruptors. Or like really broodlord like weird scenarios. Yeah, I don't know why I, I I'd rarely go carriers. I think it was I don't know. I think I was just like really just tired at this point. Mm -hmm. I know I played this game at like midnight and um it was you know um definitely not a lot of thinking done. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. He's going Broodlord with a lot of edges. And you still haven't got Blink. Like, uh, Blink is something you should think about when you get a Twilight for your upgrades. You know like, what? I've never been a big Blink guy. I have, I've never really used Blink that much besides... Um, yeah, well, it's really essential in PvZ. And, uh, like, uh, usually if you... Uh, if uh, they go roaches and they don't go ijas, what you want to do is uh, you want to get the twilight as soon as possible to get plus two. But if you rush colossus because they have a lot of ijas, then usually you can go one one uh, upgrades before getting the twilight for plus two weapon. And uh, usually as soon as you get the twilight, unless uh, unless like scenarios where you don't need blink pvz are really rare, like. Um, 
like uh, if they go Roach and Fester, Blink is good. If they go Roach Hydra, Blink is good. If they go Ling and Fester, Blink is good. If they go Muta, Blink is good. It's like always good, but sometimes if they go Hydras and you need to rush Colossus, you can afford to not make uh, Blink. But in any other situation, Blink is crucial. And uh, yeah, that game, if you would have had Blink, it's because like the shield is so good on Stalker, it's half its HP, so it's really good to just save them and just Blink back. Especially with force field, like, uh, you know, like you cut off his army in two, and then whatever you can attack, uh, you blink it back, so he ends up, like, killing, like, very few units, and you end up killing a lot more than, you know, you understand? Yeah. Okay. That's a good point. You still add a bit of probes. If you want to speed it up just to finish this, we can go to, like, eight times, because it just, it, it's just a lot of back and forth, back yeah. and forth. And I know we're almost at an hour. Here we are at an hour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was a silly game. Too many. Uh... Yeah, you just needed another Colossus. I would have turtle for third Colossus instead yeah. of trying to engage. See, I think this is like my knowledge of the game. It's just you know, it's been a lot of mass games. Um, and you know, season one pretty much, I would block the third in like every time, and then just rush them. You know after they're on one base and um mm -hmm. I'm, I'm finally getting my zerg game back now i want to say so it's definitely um some really good advice that you've given me yeah. i rarely double forge pvz unless like they're playing very passive and i scout a double evo and, like i really don't agree with the triple forge but uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i never i usually um just go double forge and i'm not sure when to go double forge like and uh, P in PVT, if they go for medivac and they don't have too many marines, double forge can be good. But in PVZ, like I said, if they play uh, really passive and they go like uh, Ling and Festor or whatever, and uh, or just like uh, with the uh, Banelings, and they go for double Evo where they're going to have like uh, Carapace and Melee upgrade, and they go double Evo, then it's good to add a second forge. On PVZ, I usually don't do it, so I don't recommend it. Yeah. So, uh, do you have any question, last question, before I let you go? Um, yeah, I do have one last question. What I wanted to know is, um, what do you, what are your spell hotkeys? Because I used to, um, I used to use, like, QWE for my Warcraft uh, hero hotkeys, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, or I would use Q for move, and I would use ZXC, um, mm -hmm. for my spells. What do you use for, like, um... Force field and um, your spells. Everything uh, standard. I didn't like the only odd keys I've changed uh, is uh, the control seven for control tilde, and then I changed the odd keys for the camera settings to shift F two, shift F three, shift F four, shift F five. But other than that, everything else is standard. Oh wow. Okay, so yeah, I haven't. I, I don't really think you need to make the hot keys, honestly. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, be played off standard. So yeah, that's um that's a really good uh, lesson, and I picked up a lot of advice that I'm going to try to um, apply to my game. And obviously, mm -hmm. uh, I will be scheduling my next one because you know I want you to uh you know kind of learn how the player I am and learn what I do and stuff. So mm -hmm. I will um be be trying to do at least uh, two lessons a week, maybe more. Okay. Uh, don't all right. uh, don't hesitate to uh, message me. Uh... You know, in between session, if you have like strategy question, and uh, if uh, if I see the same kind of like stupid question every every time, I'll uh, e eventually tell you to just watch your replays. Because a lot of students sometimes they, uh, they well, it's not stupid, but you know, it's like uh, I lose to uh, roaches, I lose to uh, bio ball. It's, you're not losing <laughs> to that. You're losing because of yeah. mistakes you've made, timings you weren't prepared for. Like, uh, and, and those scenarios, I can't really answer, uh, a question because unless I look at the replay, so really checking your replay after a loss to find out why you lost. If you want a confirmation, if you want to be like, I scouted this at that time and I did this, but I ended up losing. Can you tell me why? Then it's easy for me to answer. But if you ask me like, oh, I lose to roaches, what do you do? Like, I can't tell you the army composition, but if you, like, you lost because of timing or sloppy macro, like, I can't. But 
Anyway, point is, just don't hesitate to uh, message me uh, if yeah, you have any agree. questions. You know, like, the lower level questions are obviously, you know, they're what I used to ask when I was, you know, just floating around Diamond. You know, I would be like, um, you know, why am I always losing to this mass bio and stuff? And then when I watched, you know, more streams and more builds, I'm like, all right, well, <laughs> I'm not, I didn't put, you know, I didn't make, um, you know, my forge at the right time. I didn't get my attack plus one at the right time. You know, I didn't make classes when I should have, you know, I didn't make, I, you know, instead of just, uh, oh, I'm losing to this, I'm losing to that. I definitely mm -hmm. see your point. Yep. And if you get frustrated, just take a break. It's no work. Like, uh, <laughs> because in the end, yeah, okay, you're, you know, you're spending time having fun, but it's no work uh, being frustrated and not learning properly. Yeah, that was my biggest problem. Um, I think everyone with StarCraft, you know, when they see, like, Hawk win the uh, MLG and stuff, you know, they're mm -hmm. like, oh, Protoss, you know, motivation and stuff. And then, you know, you start playing a bunch of games and you realize that, you know, you can't you can't necessarily play at that level. So, you know, I think mm -hmm. that's really important that you that you take your time and you don't get mad because that's one of the mistakes I used to do a lot was I played, you know, too many games and I would get angry and I just get sloppier and sloppier. And, you know, I, you can't win in that mindset. You really can't. Mm -hmm. So uh, thanks for your time. Thank and, you. And uh, don't hesitate to contact me. Awesome. Thank you very much, Dedro. Right. Have a good night. Great lesson. Appreciate everything. <laughs> Peace. See you later.